Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're gonna build a Raspberry Pi powered arcade stick. If you're looking for a do-it-yourself USB arcade stick, this will also work like that. But for me, I wanted to put a Raspberry Pi inside of it so I could sit on my couch and play arcade games on my television. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing you're gonna need is an arcade stick enclosure. Now I got this on Amazon for about $24 and it's well worth the money. It's acrylic on the top, pre-cut, comes with the bolts, suction cups, and everything. I'm gonna leave Amazon and eBay links in the description for everything used in this video. So like I said, this is an awesome arcade stick enclosure. It's not top of the line by any means, but it's really awesome and it's cheap. All the buttonholes and joystick hole are pre-cut and it comes with all the hardware you need. Next thing you're gonna need is an encoder board, buttons, and a joystick. Now I'm using a Genuine Sanwa joystick here and I wanted to use the Genuine Sanwa buttons but they're a little long for putting a Raspberry Pi inside of here. So I went with knockoff buttons and they work great. You can get a full arcade button set that comes with the joysticks, buttons, and the encoder board for like $20 on Amazon or eBay. I've used one for years and I love it, but this Sanwa joystick just makes things so much better. It's really up to you, but I'm gonna leave links to everything down below so you can pick and choose what you want. I would definitely go with the Sanwa joystick. The Sanwa buttons feel a lot better than these knockoff clone ones, but the clones do work and they work very well. Now we need to get video out from the Raspberry Pi from inside of the box itself. I'm using a panel mount HDMI plus USB 3.0. Very easy to install. I'm gonna be powering the Raspberry Pi through the USB port on the panel mount system, right under the HDMI adapter. I just cut the mail in off the USB 3.0 port on the panel mount system and soldered in a micro USB cable. If you don't wanna do any soldering, you can always get a female to female USB 3.0 adapter and a small micro USB cable. So I just soldered mine. I'm gonna be sending power through the 3.0 adapter to the Raspberry Pi. And here's what mine looks like after I soldered a micro USB male in onto the USB 3.0 cable. Now there's all kinds of ways you can make one of these. You could cut a hole in the side to put your micro USB through to power the Pi. You could cut a slit in the side and have the Pi hanging out, but I wanted mine pretty clean, so this is the way I'm doing it. The whole point of this build was to sit on my couch, playing on my big screen TV out my living room. I'm gonna have the arcade stick in my lap. So I got a 10 foot HDMI cable and a 10 foot male to male USB 2.0 cable. The male to male will be powering the Raspberry Pi through the USB 3.0 port on the panel mount system. Very simple, when I get this put together, you'll understand how it works. These are the tools I used for this build. A hot glue gun, doesn't have to be a super nice hot glue gun. A drill with a step bit on it. That way we can drill into the case itself to put the panel mount HDMI through and screw it on. All my bolts were eight millimeter, five sixteenths will also work. And I also used a few zip ties. So the first step, mount your joystick, put your buttons in the acrylic panel. No wires are hooked up yet. So I went with some pinks for my action buttons. My start and select button are black. I have my Sanwa joystick bolted in. Now it's time to wire it up. Very easy to do. It might look intimidating if you've never done it before but I assure you a child can do it. So what I like to do is just connect my wires to my buttons first off. Now it doesn't matter what goes to positive or negative, these are just on and off switches. I kinda like to keep mine clean, put the negative on the right hand side and the positive on the left, but like I said, it doesn't matter. They're not carrying power, they're only on and off switches. My USB encoder board will be mounted right here. I just put a couple dabs of hot glue on it. It fits perfectly. I plug my joystick into the joystick port on the USB encoder and I'm going to plug my buttons in. It doesn't matter where the buttons go because we're going to be programming them inside of RetroPie. So the buttons don't know any better right now until we program them inside of the emulation station setup. If you just want to use this as a do-it-yourself arcade stick, you're done. All you need to do is run your USB cable out of this little hole here, bolt the top on, and plug it into your Raspberry Pi you have a do-it-yourself arcade stick. But I wanna take it one step further and I'm gonna put a Raspberry Pi 3 inside of this unit. You'll need to drill a one inch hole if you're using the exact method that I'm using. I just put a one inch hole right in the middle of the arcade stick facing the backside. Placed my USB slash HDMI panel mount in here and screwed it on. 
I just left the little flap on here. You can close it and open it up, but we're going to be powering the Pi through the USB 3.0 port and our HDMI is obviously going to be coming out of the HDMI port. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3 flirt case here. You can hot glue it in the bottom. I just left mine without any hot glue because when we put the cables in, it's gonna stay pretty stationary. The reason I used the flirt case over a fan, I didn't want any extra moving parts inside. And the flirt case itself is the heat sink. So it's a passively cooled case for the Raspberry Pi. It's all aluminum and all the heat from the CPU transfers to the case itself. Let's go ahead and plug everything in. So I have my HDMI from the panel mount plugged into the HDMI port on my Raspberry Pi. And the USB 3.0 to micro USB that I created is plugged into the power port on the Raspberry Pi. So power is going to be coming from our USB mail to USB mail to the USB 3.0 port on the panel mount system. Now all we need to do is plug in our USB arcade stick encoder board to the Raspberry Pi. I bent one of my buttons here, both leads I bent them up so I could clear the Raspberry Pi 3's flirt case. When I put the top on, it should clear it perfectly with no interference. Bolt the top on and you're good to go. So I definitely recommend setting up your Raspberry Pi's image before you put everything together. You can leave the top off and set it up that way. Another thing I recommend is putting a vinyl cover over the top plate on this because it is prone to pick up fingerprints so bad. So I actually ordered some carbon fiber 3M vinyl adhesive on Amazon. I'll leave a link down below. And I'm gonna be covering this later on. I've already set up my image in here, so I'm just gonna plug it into my TV and test this thing out. HDMI and our long USB 2.0 cable coming from a USB power supply. So over here I have a 2.5 amp power supply plugged in and I have my TV or slash monitor plugged in also. I'm using a motion blue base image here and I just put a lot of arcade stuff on it because that's the main reason I made this to play arcade games. I'm gonna fast forward this intro here because it does take a little while to boot. All right, I gotta boot it up. Arcade stick's working fine. Now you might notice a little bit of lag, not with the arcade stick, but if you're using this motion blue image to scroll through the main menu, sometimes it lags, sometimes you have to hit the button twice. Now it's not the arcade stick itself because I tested it with the controller. I guess it's just a lot for this Raspberry Pi to process. I don't use a track mode much because of this issue. I'm going to go ahead and start a game here and you'll see that the arcade stick has no lag at all. I love these little cheap USB encoders. Some people might want to use a different one. It's totally up to you, but I find that these work perfectly with the Raspberry Pi or even PC. I'll go ahead and start a Street Fighter game. Now you could always shorten these cords up if you don't have a 15 foot HDMI cord or a 15 foot USB cable. These 2.5 amp power supplies are very hard to find. You can find the 2.4s all day long on Amazon. I'm gonna try my hardest to find a link that's working. I got this one a long time ago and I'm not sure if they're available anymore, but this is what I mainly use for my Raspberry Pi. Get into some gameplay here. You can see the stick working. Everything's inside of the stick, so you can chill on your couch, plug it in. And I know these cords are long, and some people don't want them strewn across their living room, but that's why I built this. If you want to use shorter USB cables and HDMI cables, be my guest if you're going to be sitting this close to your television. The Sanwa joystick just makes the games way more enjoyable. There's no play in the joystick at all. And as for the buttons, these are clone buttons, but they do work. A lot of people swear against them. Some people swear by them. For me, I've never had any issues with the off-brand buttons. Go ahead and find another game to test out real quick. Now, I wouldn't like to play NES games with an arcade stick. That's why I set up a lot of arcade games. I have a lot of Neo Geo, FBA, and main games here.
So that's it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. That's how I set mine up. I know there's tons of other ways you can set this up. You can actually add more USB ports, but I have a Raspberry Pi 3 and I can link up a Bluetooth controller if I ever want to do two player. If you're interested in making something like this, I'm going to leave all the links down below. I have a section for Amazon and a section for eBay. Everything can be found on Amazon and everything can be found on eBay. You might come out cheaper if you have Prime with Amazon, but it's really up to you. If you guys could, hit that like button and subscribe. And like always, thanks for watching.